Today we're talking about how to safely create and use temporary files and directories in your programs. Welcome back to another video that hopefully teaches you something new about programming that you didn't know, or maybe it's a useful reminder. As I mentioned, today's topic is temporary files, which we often have to create and destroy in the process of running our programs. And this is such a common thing that we actually have built in tools that a lot of you may not know about. And I also want to take a second to thank all of you wonderful people who support this channel through Patreon, where if you're not familiar with it, you can support the channel, you can get access to source code and get access to my monthly office hour. and also also those that buy merch on Merchinate, because hey, who doesn't want to dress like this all the time? But seriously, a huge thanks, it means a lot. So back to temporary files. First of all, what are temporary files? Simply, they're a file that's temporary, a file that you create because you need some space on the disk somewhere, you need to write something, an intermediate value, something, but you don't intend for it to stick around for a very long time. You're eventually, you're gonna create it, you're gonna do something with it, and then you're gonna destroy it. And this seems pretty simple. I mean, when you first think about it, you think, what's so hard about that? Just create a file, write some junk into it, then afterwards delete it, no big deal, right? Well, it can be a little trickier than that, so let's take a look, let's look at some code. Now, in this example, I'm going to be using Linux as my reference platform. I will try to stick to POSIX compliant functions, but your mileage may vary on other systems, especially Windows. Also, this code's going to be written in C, but this also works in C++, and just about any other language out there has something like this. So once you're comfortable with how things work in C, you can really easily adapt it to your Python code, your Ruby code, pretty much anything. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with this example code. Pretty simple example. Uh, it's gonna illustrate one of the cases where we wanna use temporary files. It's a program that simply downloads a URL using libcurl and writes it to a file. Now we've talked about libcurl in other videos. So I'm gonna show you the code really quickly, but I'm not gonna go all through the libcurl stuff. I'll put a link down in the description if you missed that previous video check it out, you can definitely get caught up. But if we're looking, basically there's two different modules. There's this there's this downloader, which has a main function, which is do download, just one function. It takes a URL and it takes an open file where it's gonna put the contents that it downloads. And over here we see, this is the code for it. The only thing that's different here from my previous curl example is that I am using the write data option right here to pass the open file handle. I'm gonna pass this to the got data function, which is my callback function that's gonna be called whenever I get a chunk of data. So just so everyone can see it, do download is right here. We're basically just initializing curl. We're setting a few options right here. And then we run curl easy perform, which is going to perform the download. And then eventually we'll clean up. And each time we get a chunk of data, it's gonna call this got data. And you notice that I did pass in the file handle, the file pointer, this pointer to this file struct right here. I'm setting it to be what was passed in. It starts out as a void pointer because, well, they want you to be able to pass anything to it. And so they don't know what type of pointer it is but I do. And then each time I get a chunk, I'm basically just gonna come in here and write those bytes that I received to the file. So nothing too complicated. It's basically what you've seen before in my libcurl video. So if we jump back here into main, you're gonna see that mostly I'm, it's not really complicated at all. All I'm doing is I'm checking my arguments. I'm expecting the program to give me two different arguments, a URL and a file name. This should be f open right here. And of course, if we fail to open the file right here, we're going to print out some kind of error message and exit the program. But if everything looks looks okay, then we're going to call our do download function while passing in the URL and the open file handle. And then once we're done, we're gonna close the file. So pretty straightforward, nothing really complicated here. I do have a make file, again, nothing complicated here. This is pretty standard for most all my videos. If you aren't familiar with make, be sure to check out my make videos. They'll definitely help you get caught up. Now, but okay, so this is our program. If we come back to our terminal, we can compile it. And then we can run it with something like this. We can say HTTPS. Let's start with something small like my homepage. And we'll save it in a file called result.html. Okay, so this looks like it works fine. We get the downloaded HTML content in result.html. You can see that right here. Okay, easy peasy, nothing fancy about that. But so the question is, what does this have to do with temporary files? Well, a downloader like this might get interrupted. 
for example, okay, but let's say that we want to download something bigger, like let's say the Linux kernel. So we can do the same kind of thing we did before, but let's say something like this, where we're actually requesting uh, something that's a lot bigger. Okay, you're gonna see, so this is gonna take a while. And while it's downloading, there's always the chance that I may get bored, I may change my mind, or I may just accidentally kill it while it's running. And if I do, then right now, you notice I have a result.tar.exe. If I look at it, you can see this file exists right here, but it's a broken file. It's there, but it's incomplete. It only got partway through the download. So if I actually try to do anything with it, I'm not going to get the results I want, which may not be what I want for my users. So instead, it's really common to instead use a temporary file. We're gonna download into a temporary file and then once it's completely downloaded, then we can move it over to the file name we want. That way the user never ends up with a partial file and thinking that it's a complete file. It's either all or nothing. So let's look really quick at how we would do that. Okay, so if I gave this challenge to a brand new programmer, one thing they would do, they would say, okay, I got an idea, let's just open a temporary file, right? So instead of opening directly from argv2, we could just come in here and say, temp file name equals download.tmp, some, who knows, just pick this name out of my head. And then we come down here and let's open temp file name. And then we'll write into that. Of course, if we get an error here, that's temp file name is our problem. But so this is now going to write it into a different file called download.tmp. And which of course isn't what we wanted in the end. But so then here at the end, what we can do is we can call rename. So our rename function, it's been around since C99. So you should be able to do this just about anywhere. And we'll rename our temporary file. So temp file name, we're gonna rename that to our argv2. And I know there's some error cases I'm not checking for, that's fine. I'm just trying to illustrate how we handle temporary files. But so the point is, this is pretty easy. So first let's make sure it works, make sure I didn't miss anything. And now if we come in here, we can run it here. Okay, that seemed to work okay. And let's try it with something bigger. Now, as we go, you can see that we get this download.tmp file, but it hasn't actually copied it over to the result.tar, uh, though it's still here, so maybe just to make sure everyone's clear on what's going on. Let me remove that. So you see it's gone. Let's remove the temporary file. And now if we run it, okay, so you can see here, if it gets killed halfway through, you'll notice that we don't have the actual file that we're looking for, the result.tar.exe, that's not there, but we do have our download.tmp file. And this is cool because it means that we're sort of all or nothing. Plus right here, we do actually see that we successfully downloaded five megabytes of the Linux kernel. And maybe there's something we could do with that in some cases, if we get a partial download. For now, I'm not gonna worry about that. But what I do wanna look at is, are there some complications with this? Because this looked pretty easy, but what happens if I want several things to be downloading at once? Okay, let's say that I wanna run this program a bunch of times, it's a really useful utility and everyone's using it to download stuff. And so let's say I wanna have multiple versions of this program running at the same time. They're all gonna try to use the same file name and they're all basically going to start stomping on each other. They're gonna pollute data and that's gonna make me really sad. So so at this point, I could say, okay, well, let's come up with a different naming scheme. Maybe we'll stick a random number at the end of the file name, or maybe we'll take the original file name and put a .tmp at the end of that. And some programs do that. Both of these can be a pain. And if you're not careful, they can open up a lot of different issues, including some security vulnerabilities for your programs. So today I thought I would show you some functions that exist in the C standard library to help you with this sort of thing. Okay, so let's look at some documentation. Now there are a lot of different options here. Some like temp file here are pretty old. I'm not gonna use that one, uh, but we could. I think, honestly, I think it's mostly still floating around here for backwards compatibility reasons and that's okay. Now you're also gonna notice as you look through these that there's a lot of warnings down here in the descriptions. This is because they can open up security vulnerabilities in your application, some of the older versions. I'm not gonna delve into all the details of that today, but I wanted you to be aware that these warnings are here. And for that reason, I'm not going to use any of these ones that have warnings with them. The one we are gonna use for today is all the way down here. We're gonna use make s temp, at least for now, it seems to be warning free. And what this function does is it takes a template for what we want, call the temporary file. This template has to end with six X's like this. So we have to make sure we provide x, 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 x at the end of the string, whatever the template is. Also, the template is going to be replaced with the actual file name we're going to use. And then 
MKS temp is going to create us a new temporary file and return us a file descriptor to it, assuming it's all successful. Now we're gonna add that to our program. Before we do, I just wanna draw attention. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this one, but MKD temp is what you would use if you wanted to create a temporary directory. Let's say you just needed a temp directory with a whole bunch of generated files in it that then you're gonna do something with. You could use that as well. But so now let's jump back into our program and let's see if we can add it to actually use this built-in function. Now, one thing that is a little weird weird about this make s temp is that it modifies our template string. So what I'm going to do, you want to make sure one that this string isn't const. And also in this case, I really want to add the user supplied file name into my template. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this up just a little bit and I'm going to make this an array and let's use path max. And then I'm going to use snprintf to actually write our temp file name into there, to actually write some information into that. So file name, and I wanna limit it at path max minus one. And then what I'm gonna do here is just say, we're gonna use a path that's dot slash. I'm gonna put in the, the file that our, our result file name in the end right there. And then those six X's did you count that right? Yep. And then we're going to put argv2 in here. Okay. So this is basically going to set up my template. It's going to create my template the way I want it. And then down here, what I'm going to do is say int file descriptor. We're going to declare a file descriptor because that's what make us temp returns. And then we're going to call make us temp and we're going to pass in our temp file name. Okay. So what this is doing is it's going to make a temporary file with using that template. That's great. Now this would be really easy if we had been using open and read and write. That was basically the functions that are working with file descriptors. Then we could just use this FD, but right now that's, we've been using these pointers to file structs. So, so we can keep the rest of the program just as it is. What I'm going to do is change this to FD open and we're going to pass in our file descriptor and say write mode again. And this is just going to give us a file pointer, a pointer to a file struct that corresponds to this open file descriptor. Now we need to come down here and change one more thing. Uh, we need to check that, to make sure that FD is not equal to negative one because this could have had errors in a couple different places. But yeah, so this should work. The rest of our example should stay the same. Now let's just make sure, make sure I didn't mess anything up and we'll come down and compile it. It still compiles, great. And then if we run it, let's come down here. Let's first start with our shorter example. Everything seems fine. We did get our result.html right here, just like we did before. That's great. Let's just remove my download.tmp file. Okay, great. Now let's try it with our longer download because that's the real test. We didn't actually see what make us temp was doing, but if I start this, we'll start getting a download and then I kill it halfway. Now here you can see that we do actually have our temporary file right here. I'll show it to you in the terminal as well. You can see that it did follow my template. This is basically where it's putting my downloaded data. The temporary file has this random ending, which helps us make sure that we don't collide with other programs that are also, you know, other versions of the same program that are trying to do the same thing. So I could run a lot of downloads at the same time and the file names would all be different. And so folks, that's how you use make s temp to create temporary files. Like I said, there's a lot of different variants on this. Specifically, I hope you'll take a look at make d temp that makes directories. But for today, this is where I'm gonna stop. I hope this was useful. I hope you learned something from it. I hope this helps you in a future project. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss my next video. And until then, happy coding and I'll see you later.